Defense, may it please the court, your honor, opposing counsel, members of the jury, why are we here? Today you've heard a story about how Cameron Poole, throughout the summer of 2012, stole money from Dr. World's admissions. You learned that Cameron Poole pocketed money taken from cash sales of World Tour bracelets. You learned that throughout that summer, the Parks accountant Haley Floyd caught on to what Cameron Poole was doing. And on August 30th of 2012, removed Cameron Poole from his position as a ticket booth. You learned that on August 30th of 2012, Cameron Poole was the one who came back to Rockto World. Cameron Poole was the one who threatened Haley Floyd. Cameron Poole was the one who robbed Rockto World. And Cameron Poole was the one who escaped. So why are we here? Prosecution is bringing forth charges against Whit Bowman. The only way they can prove that Whit Bowman was liable for Cameron Poole's actions is to prove that Whit Bowman was acting with complicity in both charges that they have brought forth against Whit Bowman today. They must prove, one, that Whit Bowman was complicit in theft by deception, and two, that Whit Bowman was complicit in robbery in the first degree. But let's break that up for you. First, theft by deception. To prove theft by deception, the prosecution had to prove to you that Whit Bowman intentionally deprived Rockter World of $500 or more by creating a false impression while acting with complicity. Second charge they brought forth was robbery in the first degree. And to prove this, they had to prove that Whit Bowman acting in complicity threatened Haley Floyd with a dangerous object while intending to accomplish theft and in doing so, threatened or hurt Haley Floyd. Now, to act with complicity simply means that, Cam or that Whit Bowman had to aid Cameron Poole in either the planning or the execution of the scheme that happened throughout the summer of 2012 or in the robbery in August 30th of 2012. But the prosecution has failed to meet their burden of proof today. They had to prove to you beyond a reasonable doubt each and every element of all of their charges. Now, beyond a reasonable doubt is the highest burden in our judicial system. It means that when you go back to deliberate, after you've given a fair consideration of all the evidence, if you have a doubt in your mind based on reason or common sense, then you must find Whit Bowman not guilty. Let's look at the first charge they brought forth today, theft by deception. To do this, they had to prove that Whit Bowman helped in either the planning or the execution of the scheme that was going on throughout 2012. But what are we here today? When Caleb Floyd came on the stand, he told you that when he investigated the scheme that was going on, he suspected Cameron Poole to be involved. He went to look into Cameron Poole's locker, not to any other employee's locker. He found the fake wristbands in Cameron Poole's locker. Cameron Poole was the one who was working in the ticket booth on that day. And when questioned on cross-examination, Haley Floyd even said, I do not think Whit Bowman was involved with the wristband scheme going on in 2012. Every witness in today's trial who saw Whit Bowman throughout the summer of 2012 at the park told you, I never saw Whit Bowman with any fake wristbands. I never saw Whit Bowman take any cash from customers. So is there doubt? that Whit Bowman was involved in the scheme during 2012? Yes. Now the second charge they brought forth was robbery in the first degree. And it has been proven in court today that Cameron Poole did in fact threaten Haley Floyd with a knife while intending to accomplish theft. But what we're really asking in today's case was Whit Bowman complicit. The prosecution is alleging that Whit Bowman's knife was used during the robbery. But Haley Floyd, the one who was threatened with this knife, could not even say with certainty that yes, it was Whit Bowman's knife that Cameron Poole had. That right there, ladies and gentlemen, is doubt. Today you also heard that when questioned after the robbery, Haley Floyd said, I do not believe Whit Bowman had anything to do with this. I don't know how Whit could have been involved immediately after the robbery had taken place. Now you heard today also from the defense's witness, Charlie Kaminsky. He came before you and told you that on that day, 
Cameron Poole made a phone call to Whit Bowman after the robbery. And in this, he explained, Cameron Poole explained to Whit Bowman what happened. Cameron Poole had to explain to Whit Bowman that the robbery occurred. Cameron Poole had to explain to Whit Bowman that he used a knife. Well, if Whit Bowman was acting with complicity, why did Cameron Poole have to explain to Whit Bowman what had happened on that day? Why did Cameron Poole have to explain to Whit Bowman that I had to use your knife? Now, you heard today that when Whit Bowman heard this, he was, or she was surprised. She was confused. She was asking Cameron Poole, what do you mean? Whit Bowman had no idea that the robbery was going to take place on August 30th, 2012. Because of that, how could Whit Bowman be complicit? The defense has also claimed that Whit Bowman helped in the escape of Cameron Poole. That Cameron Poole escaped the tunnel of terror because Whit Bowman was working that ride. Well, you heard today that when Cameron Poole escaped, that the ride went into blackout mode. And because it went into blackout mode, and because Whit Bowman was working the ride, that she was complicit. But what else have we heard from you today? We heard from two separate witnesses who explained that what blackout mode was, how the tunnel of, tower, the tunnel of terror operates, and how it's very easy for the rides to be put into blackout mode how the levers and the buttons and the switches are all close together on the panel, and how the emergency stop switch and the maintenance lever that puts the ride into blackout mode are right next to each other. In fact, you heard from Billy Isaacs, who said himself that he has accidentally put the ride into blackout mode before. So is it reasonable to assume that on that day, Whit Bowman could have put the ride into blackout mode accidentally? The answer is yes. The prosecution has come before you and said that it was Whit Bowman's plan, it was Whit Bowman's knife, it was Whit Bowman's robbery. But they have failed to prove all of these things. Haley Floyd could not tell us that it was Whit Bowman's knife. No one could tell us that it was Whit Bowman's plan to steal from Rock the World during 2012. No one could tell us that it was Whit Bowman who planned the robbery on August 30th. What has been proved in today's case is doubt. Whit Bowman was surprised when she heard about the robbery. Whit Bowman did not know that Cameron Poole was going to use a knife. Whit Bowman did not seem like she was involved during the scheme in 2012. The prosecution has failed to meet their burden of proof. So why are we here? Cameron Poole cannot be found guilty of the crimes. And you heard today on the direct or the cross-examination side to Kimball that he had to find someone to be held accountable for what happened. And that person they are now blaming is Whit Bowman. The prosecution has failed to meet their burden of proof, and that is why we, as a defense, ask you to find Whit Bowman not guilty of theft by deception and robbery of the first degree. Thank you. Uh, yes, Your Honor. May I ask how much time I have remaining? Uh, Mr. Kenny, you have one minute and 57 seconds remaining. Uh, can I retrieve evidence from the bench, please, Your Honor? Sure. Uh, just the text messages. Thank you very much.